God, he's faithful to those amen, that believe amen, and trust amen. in him. Yeah. Amen. You're in the right place this morning. If you came expecting a movement of God this morning. Amen. 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 We are not defeated. We are overcomers. Amen. amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for knowing who he is? Amen. For giving us revelation. Amen. Amen. There is no other place I'd rather be but in his house. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, well, welcome to Sunday morning service. Um, let's keep in prayer. Those that are still on the way, those that are going to be watching online. Amen. Amen. Let's just come with expectancy this morning. Yes. Amen. Let's just Amen. come with our hearts open, our minds open, right. and ready to be inputted. Right. Amen. Amen. God has a lot of people say input into us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It don't matter if we have our walls up today, if we have those have those barriers up this morning. Amen. So I know a lot of us have rough weeks, rough days. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter where you stand. Amen. God is able to break down those walls. Yes, God is able to get victory in times of defeat. Amen. God is able to move those mountains that you thought could never be moved. Amen. Today, let today be a new day for you. Praise God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. And we appreciate, God, everything that you're doing for us. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. Lord, without you, we are lost. Without you, Lord, we have no way of making it to your kingdom. Lord, today I want to let down, Lord, all the distractions in my life. Today I want to let go, Lord, of the chains that are binding me, Lord. Today, Lord, I want to give myself to you. Today I want to submit my life to you. Today, Lord, let today be the day that I give everything to you and give you the praise, the praise that you are due. Come on, church, let's worship him together. Hallelujah. 
be weak. <laughs> but the Spirit of the Lord, when He is with us, when He is in us, when He is guiding you, you're strong. Amen. Amen. I like to tell people that there's a lot of people that believe that the enemy is beating them up sometimes. And the enemy is overcoming in their situations. But us as Christians, we have more power than our pinky than the enemy has in his whole camp. Praise God. If you believe by faith, amen, you are able to move mountains. Amen. Those things that we feel defeated by is nothing to our God. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that all things, all things are possible? Amen. I believe that this morning. Amen. When I go to God in prayer, I'm expecting answers. Amen. I don't just do it for just because I have, I know words and I can speak. No, I'm praying because I'm expected. Praise God. Praise God. Are you expected from God this morning? Amen. We want to go to God in prayer. Amen. As I said, we're not just going to God in prayer. We are petitioning miracles today. Praise God. We're hoping, amen, that we can touch the throne of God this morning. We got needs in this place, amen, that are devastating in our, some of our lives. Amen. We want to remember J.D. Yana this morning. Praise God. We heard the awesome testimony that God's moving in, in her cancerous body. Amen. Sometimes things don't look like it, like we want it to look. Amen. We're expecting when we pray, things disappear and we're good as new and, and all that. But sometimes God works little by little yeah. to build up our faith. Right. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Whatever he's given, I'll take it. Yeah. I'm going to take it. Yeah. Because my God just let me know that he loves me. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. And so that I can show that I love him. Amen. I want to talk to him. Amen. I want to have that constant prayer life with God. Amen. That's what we want to do this morning. Amen. Anyone has something they want to petition God about this morning. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's also remember um, Jesse. Amen. I didn't hear any recent updates on him. No? Amen. Let's remember Jesse. Amen. He's going through a difficult time right now. Amen. In pain and he's, he feels like there's no relief. Amen. I remember a couple weeks ago he came here and got baptized, got the Holy Ghost and amen. Things that he was not expecting happened to him. His life changed. Amen. So it's a uh, Listen, we don't know. We don't know what God's doing. And it's none of our business sometimes. Amen. God be God. And we're going to be humans. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anyone else? Go ahead, brother. Amen. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let's, let's remember praying. Amen. Amen. Sis, go ahead. Seizures ain't nothing for God, right? That's right. Amen. Right. Since we're going to keep you in prayer, uh, we have a couple of people in the church that's experiencing that as a constant battle in their lives. Amen. God's able. We're not going to give up. Amen. It hasn't happened yet. Amen. The answer has not come yet. Amen. But we're expecting. And we're going to keep on praying. Amen. We're going to keep on taking it to the one that can do something about it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, sis. Amen. Amen. Brain again. Praise God. So just remember brain. Amen. We actually did see him this morning, and we want to, amen. Let's just keep it in prayer. Amen. Looks like he's going through a rough time. Um, and I'm saying that even though everything around him, everybody around him, makes the same thing. Amen. But God's able to restore those that need restoration. Amen. Whether we think or whether we're feeling it, God's able. God's able. Let's just extend arms and then keep them in prayer. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead, brother. For my wife, she's been having some swelling on her right side of her face and right here, like her shoulder. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. We already took it to the doctors and they said everything's good. They right. can't find anything. But right. But there's something going on, right? Yeah, going on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Doctors are limited in their <laughs> in their profession, I guess. Amen. But I know that the great physician. Right. Amen. 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 You know him today? Right. <laughs> I know a great physician. 
Amen. So many times, amen, in pain, and so many times didn't know, amen, where my relief was going to come from. But when you look to the hills, when you look up, and you recognize the one that's able, the one that created us, amen, when you put it in his hands, amen, sometimes, as I said, he doesn't work the way that you want him to work, when you want him to work. Sometimes he doesn't answer why you want him to work. Sometimes we get things messed up. We want you to do it for this reason. Listen, yeah. God knows the future. All right. Let's yeah. just put it in his hands. Yeah. Right. Amen. God, here it is. Amen. Can't do nothing about it, so I'm going to give it to you. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Athena, Paula, and Jenny. Paulina. Paulina. Amen. Yes. Amen. People that uh, she's witnessing to. Amen. A lot of souls need salvation. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're expecting a lot um, just people to come through even for next week where we have uh, Easter service. Amen. Amen. Listen, there's a lot of souls out there that need God. Amen. We want to be a light. Amen. We want to be a witness. Amen. Whenever you have an opportunity, take it. Amen. Because there's souls that are lost. They don't know which way to turn. They don't know who to go to. Amen. But I know a God. Amen. That's able to fix them. I know God is able to save them. I know God is able to take away their sins. Praise God, Heavenly Father. We thank you this morning for who you are. We thank you, Lord, this morning, God, for this opportunity to be in this place. Uh, Lord, to speak to the God that's able, uh, Lord, to give miracles. A uh, God that's able to open up doors. A uh, God that's able to move mountains. Uh, Lord, to show us ways when there seems like there's no way. Lord, I want to put it in your hands today. Uh, Lord, I pray for all those with seizures this morning. Lord, bless my sister Mary Beth, God. Lord, you know the pain and the circumstances in her life. Uh, Lord, we're going to drop it in your hands. Uh, Lord, you know how. Uh, how to fix those needs up. You know what to do, God. Lord, we're not going to stop us. We're not going to get tired of talking to you about it, Lord, because we know uh, you're faithful. Uh. We know, God, that there's nothing uh, that's a surprise to you, Lord, and we want to keep on coming on. Uh. We want to keep on speaking to you, God, of the things that we're that's concerning in our life, God. The things that we cannot do nothing about, uh. Lord, we're going to give it to you this morning. Lord, I pray for Athena, Lord. Lord, Paulina and Jesse, Lord, this morning, God. Lord, Lord, you know, God, their needs. You know the things, God. Lord, that's holding them back up. Lord, I pray that the word can go forth up in their life, God. Lord, open up revelation. Uh. Lord, give the Lord a desire. Uh. Lord, I want to live for you this morning. Uh. Lord, you're faithful. Uh. Lord, I thank you, God, for Jesse this morning. Lord, you know his life, God. You know the situation, God. Uh. Lord, he was told he only had six weeks to live. Uh. Lord, that was over two months ago. Uh. I thank you in the name of Jesus uh, for what you're doing. Lord, Lord, I thank you for reviving me, God. Lord, but we know your work is not done. Uh. Lord, whatever he needs, God, show yourself in his life, uh. Lord, help him, God. Lord, bless Jose's wife this morning. Lord, she has pain in her body. Uh. Lord, the doctors don't see the need. Uh. They don't see what's wrong, uh. but you know exactly uh, where that pain is. Uh. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh. Lord, touch her where she is right now, God. Uh. Show her that you're merciful. Show her that you're mighty. Uh. Show her, Lord, that you are able. Uh. Lord, to fix the little things in our bodies. Uh. Oh, thank you, God, for the peace uh, that you give us. Uh. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom uh, and the direction, Lord that you give us, God. We're thankful for what you're doing up. Oh, you're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. And we praise you, Lord. Lord, bless Bria tonight, God. Lord, you know the need of. You know his circumstances up. You know the battles, God. Lord, that he's in the midst of. Uh, you know those that he's affected, Lord. Lord, I pray right now. Uh, Lord, that I rebuke the enemy right now. Uh, Lord, that you are greater than anything, uh, Lord, that we come against in this world. Uh, Lord, I'm praying, God, that you would open his eyes. Uh, Lord, help him, Lord, to do right uh, by you, God. Lord, I pray that you would open up his understanding. Uh, Lord, help him, God. Help him, Lord, right now. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I feel better. Amen. I feel better. Amen. When you have a need, amen. And even in depression, the way you, amen, get rid of that is you just start praying. Amen. You can't have it too long. Amen. Those things that are bothering you, listen, God gives you that peace. Amen. Gives you that peace. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We want to do a tithing and offer this morning. Maybe God will bless you. I may believe that God does bless those that give. 
Amen. He's an awesome God. And we as a church have a lot to be thankful for. A lot of people that's not here today. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's keep our um, let's keep our, our saints in, in prayer. Those that you don't see, I mean, you can look around and see a lot of people not here this morning. For whatever reason, I don't know, but um, let's, let's pray for them. Because we, everybody has a battle. Yeah. Everybody's going through something. And a lot of times it's not said out loud and everything. And it, to some it's like maybe insignificant. But listen, every situation that you are going through personally is a big deal to you. And because it's a big deal to you, it's a big deal to God. But let me just interject this. It should be a big deal to each other. Your problems are my burdens. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I care personally. I know the pastor cares personally. Amen. Amen. God's a good God. Lord, we can be here all day just thanking you, God, for what you do and how you make us feel and the lovely spirit that you give us, God, when we are down and out, Lord. We can be here all day just basking in your glory. Lord, but today, God, we just want to, amen, bless all those that are going to give today, God. I pray, God, that all those that are even struggling with their finances, all those that are having troubles at home, God, not knowing where to pay their bills, not knowing, Lord, where their next dollars are going to come from. Lord, you're able. You're the one that owns a cattle on a thousand hill. You're the one that made this world. Lord, everything is yours. Lord, I'm praying the day for victory for those that feel defeated in their finances, God. Lord, I'm praying that doors will be opened this week, God. I'm praying, God, that miracles in people's finances, God, would start to change and be rearranged. Lord, we're thanking you in advance for, for what's about to happen. Lord, we want to lift you up this morning for what's about to happen. Lord, I thank you and give you the glory and the praise and the thanks and the honor. Because you're worthy and you're faithful. In the name of Jesus, come give it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Shake hands with everybody and let them know that you're glad that they're in the house of the Lord this morning. some here cleaning and then those who want to go outreach see brother David and he'll take you for outreach um, so we're going to have it going on simultaneously so cleaning and outreach that's this Saturday 
um, that there's a kids Arizona kids rally that's coming up. I don't have the exact times, but that is coming up on the 23rd. As soon as I find out the time and all the details, I'll let everyone know. But that's a kids rally. It's usually for the Sunday school age kids. It's a kids rally this on the 23rd. Also, um, there's a ladies fellowship. It is going to be on the 30th. Uh, so ladies tea we'll have that here at the church and i will get with all the ladies and as i usually send out a group text for the ladies i'll give you more detail and information on that um there is put this in your calendar men there's a men's conference coming up on the 13th and 14th that is in may so i'm letting everybody know now that is at pop pentecostals of phoenix and um as it gets closer i'll give you more detail on that you can go to the um I think it's Arizona, is it men's page, district page or something? And it's got all the information, but as soon as I get all the information more on that, I'll let you know. But that is a men's conference coming up in May. It's on the 13th and the 14th. Also, we do have Easter coming up. That is next Sunday. And we're trying to do, a, um, like I said, the outreach this Saturday for Easter. We also have some flyers out on the table. So if you want to grab a couple of these and give them to your friends and family, um, we have the, those out on the table to invite everyone here for our Easter service. And I want to thank everybody for the um, participation we had last Sunday for the Friends and Family Day. It was a wonderful time. We had a good time. Right. And I want to thank everybody that came and participated and, and invited people and all that. We had an excellent time. And as far as the Easter, there is a, a, um, a drive we're trying to do for inviting people to the Easter service. And Brother Randy, you moved. I thought she was right there. She's going to talk to us about it. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm excited about Easter. We get to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The reason we're all here is to celebrate God and uh, and the resurrection and the grace of salvation that he's given to all of us. So next week we're having a promotion. We're going to uh, have a couple of giveaways for those who bring the most visitors, for the adults and for the children. We're going to have a giveaway. So we're looking forward to that and uh, hope to see you all next week and bring out all your friends and family. I don't know about you guys, but I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. This is Palm Sunday, and it makes me think of Jesus riding into Jerusalem and the crowd bowing down and the crowd saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It was God declaring his, his Messiahship. He came into our lives. He came into the city as the Messiah. And today he can be just that great. He can be the Messiah of our lives. The Savior of my life. He's my Savior. He rides into my life and saves me from all my sins and all my transgressions. If we can worship him today the way he deserves it and cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He will become the Messiah and the Savior of our lives. Let's worship today. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Jesus.
But it was on the heels of him doing something that was quite supernatural. For you see, the Pharisees believed that the body stayed, that the, the spirit stayed with the body for about three days after death. But Jesus timed it perfectly. The Bible says he left and he had gone a few days journey away from Bethany. And the Bible says that word came to him that his friend Lazarus was sick. And the Bible says that Jesus stayed where he was at on purpose for two more days. And then he said to his disciples, now he is sleep. Let us go with him. And the disciples didn't really catch what he was saying, but Jesus was saying he died. And he just said plain to them, he's now dead. It looked like his plan was a mistake. It looked like God allowed it to be too late. It looked like God messed up. Yes, yes. And sometimes, just like Martha and Mary might have thought all that time that they were dealing with all of the phases of death, all of the phases of sickness, all the things that they're disappointed and dashed hopes and dreams, and their friend that was able to change the situation was doing nothing about it, seemingly. Yes. You kind of see it in the attitudes when he got there. If you had been here, probably would be alive. But they were saying this as Jesus said, take me to the graveyard. Not a strange request, but one that certainly caused them to just have remorse and regret and just thinking about what could have been. And they kind of let him know individually as he talks to Mary and Martha at different times. But then Jesus comes to the place where he's at. And it's now four days. He's reminded of this by the crowd when he asked them to roll the stone away. People re remark that he stinks now. He, he, he's, he's starting to decay. His, his body is starting to go away. The blood is already coagulated like syrup. It's no longer any good. No oxygen has been there to the brain. There can be no hope that there could be life there. All the things of death had started to take place. And now, even to the Pharisees, the spirit had departed. And there was no hope. If there even was any. Yes, yes. He says, roll the stone away. He was resolute in what he was saying because he had a plan. He had a purpose. Yes. It was designed. And sometimes your problem is designed by God to yes. get to the place that yes. he gets before he moves. Sometimes you need to know that God is that strong, that God is that powerful, Woo! that God's able to move and do what nobody else can do. Sometimes you need to see the hand of God. And the only time you see the hand of God sometimes in your life is when everybody else's hands. Right. Yes. can do nothing yeah. about your situation. Yeah. This is where they were at. And Jesus says, roll the stone away. All right. And then he prayed a prayer. Yes. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. This man that was dead heard the voice of the Creator. And all the parts of his body, all the things that had been messed up because of death had taken hold. All of a sudden, those things became whole again. Yes. Yes. Glory. Blood started to flow in that body, that brain that had not received air in a few days, that would be damaged and brain damage and all that, and all the body parts that would be affected. Everything. When he says Lazarus, yes. things started to heal. Yes. Things started to, to come together so life could be in that body again. Sometimes we don't think about all those meticulous details, but if you were a doctor today, you would know that because you'd study that in a school, and it would be quite a profound event for that to take place as it did. He came out alive. I said, and Jesus says, unwrap him. He was mummified, almost wrapped like a mummy, but they had to take those all that stuff off of him and allow him to be free again. And the crowd had gathered together because... You know, they, this proved to many people that he was God. That there was something, well, perhaps not God, but certainly there was something incredible about him. Praise God. Mm. Hallelujah. God yes. what he's going to do. Let's, let's stand today. And let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. I want to read one verse from Jeremiah chapter. 
29, and then if you'll put a finger there, save that place some way, and Romans 8, Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to read one verse from that chapter as well, the 28th verse, two very familiar uh, texts of scripture, but I just want to take our reading from these places and give you what God has given to me today to give to you. Hopefully it's going to bless your life and hopefully it'll be the answer that you perhaps need this morning that God can speak to you as he always does through his word. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I Men's advice, which is never <laughs> white hairs that signify some age in most cases. But he took that younger, the younger men's advice, and the Bible says that. There was a rebellion. Make a long story short. Jeroboam came to power, split the kingdom, and so you had you had two kingdoms. And as it were, the northern kingdom went until about the year 722. So as you know, on BC side of things, it, the years progressed out. And as you, you the years passed, it got shorter. So the numbers went down to zero until we came to A.D., and then, of course, it starts from zero and progresses forward to where we are at today. But in the year 722 B.C., the northern kingdom fell, and they fell at the hands of the Syrians. Sargon II was the king when that took place. He's referenced in Isaiah chapter 20, verse number 1. But of the southern kingdom, they lasted a little bit longer, and it was Nebuchadnezzar, the king of, of uh, Babylon, whose father was Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Chaldean ruler that was there before him. And in his last year, he went and struck out against Israel. The last year of his father's reign, he went out and struck out against Israel in 604. And he came against uh, Egypt, rather. And as he had his battle towards Egypt, he also took over or started a battle with the southern kingdom. In 587... Uh, 586, something like that, is when the southern kingdom finally fell under his rule. And Nebuchadnezzar was a Babylonian. And they had quite a reputation about how they fought war, how they fought the battle, how treacherous they were in battle. As a matter of fact, Habakkuk, the prophet, was along or probably prior to this time, we don't really have an exact timeline of his life, but we know it was prior to this time because his prophecy, he's complaining to God about how bad Judah's getting. And God says, oh, don't worry about it, Habakkuk. I have a plan here. I'm going to bring in the, uh, the Babylonians, Syrians. I'm going to bring them in, and they're going to take care of business. And Habakkuk has a cow about that. He says, God, how can you bring somebody much worse than us to take care of us, to, to, to fight against us, to bring that kind of approach and God says, don't worry about it. I have another plan. I'm going to take care of them with somebody else. <laughs> and that's the way God kind of done, he did things. You know, he has a plan. He, it, it progresses. It goes on. But here, Nebuchadnezzar comes to power in about 587 uh, B.C. But really before that, in, six, in, in uh, 605 or 604, he, he began to have his uh, battles with Israel. Actually, in December of 598, he comes to Israel, lays siege on Judah. And uh, in March 16th of 597, he takes Jerusalem captive. 
And he replaces Jehoiakim, who's the king of Israel, with Zedekiah, who he prefers. And he leaves. And for a few years, there's no mention of Nebuchadnezzar. He's not in Syria. He's tending to his kingdom. But what's happening in Syria and in Palestine or in that, in that, in that region in Israel um, in that time, or actually it would be the southern kingdom, so in Judah and Jerusalem, that area, everybody's filling their oats, right? He had a battle against Egypt, Nebuchadnezzar did, that he didn't really win or lose. It wasn't really, it was kind of a draw. And so all of the nations around there probably, you know, fueled or funded or armed by Egypt, even Israel, armed by Egypt, began to rebel against the little leadership that Nebuchadnezzar had there. And you have prophet after prophet that came along and said, hey, don't rebel. You're getting your punishment because the way you've been, you've been, you've been pushed against God, not following his laws. And so God's brought an enemy in, but it's been a merciful thing. He set up a king and he's allowing you to, to live in your nation. Now they were under what's called a heavy tribute, meaning that they had to pay a lot of money. A lot of gold, a lot of cattle, all the things that you know that you needed to survive. They paid a lot of it to Nebuchadnezzar because he defeated him in battle. And so he, he drew tribute, as they call it. And it was harsh. It was heavy. And so Israel rebelled and, uh, with the nations around them. And finally, in 587, Nebuchadnezzar comes in. And, and, and he, be, he lays hold on, on Israel, or actually in Judah. And he has a siege around the city. And then he finally comes in 586 and he destroys the temple. Destroys everything. Carries the chief people of Israel out to Babylon. But history tells us the way the Babylonians fought and how vicious they were. And now you have a Nebuchadnezzar that's mad. He's angry. Because these people that he left, you know, with a, with a, um, a more or less a vassal state, they now have rebelled. So he brings his army back down, and now they're, they're in business. They want to leave a mark on the minds of the people to never rebel again. So what history tells us, is that when they killed the soldiers and mutilated them, they left their bodies as a trail. And so as the captives were coming out of Israel, they were looking at their soldiers dead. And it was doing something to them. And all the ones that stayed, that they left there, fear gripped them. These people were, were cruel. They were known. Nebuchadnezzar's army the Assyrians before him. They were known for their cruelty in battle. And this is why Habakkuk, when he hit first, when God told him what he was going to do, he was, he was livid. He was just, he was, he was beside himself. God, how could you do this? But God had given the people chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. Now, history was going to unfold. History was going to unfold. It was going to do just like God said it would do. God has a plan that's going to unfold. We decide where we're going to be in that history. Yeah. We decide where we're going to be in all of that. Now, in the process of taking those people out of the land of Israel, three noted Hebrew boys or young men as we know them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in that. And also Daniel was in that. And so there were some people that still made some good choices, even though they were part of a bad system. They were part of a punishment. But they still had a relationship with God, and God individually blessed them. You see, even in the Soviet Union, when that was in place, in power, before 1998, you had a lot of, of uh, people that were serving God in, under the Iron Curtain, where you weren't allowed to serve God, or you had to be really creative on how you did it. They would have church and they would have somebody watching to make sure that no uh, government people were there, just like they're doing in China even. And they would have their service and they knew how to worship in a certain way that was kind of quiet. They had to be very creative. But still they had that relationship with God. I remember in 1980 I was, I was able to go to the uh, General Conference of the United Pentecostal Church, which was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And they had there at that particular general conference the Siberian Seven, which it was a family of seven, uh, probably more than that, but seven that we knew of. They were able to escape the Soviet Union, and they were able to come to the United States on, I think, some kind of visa, some kind of humanitarian situation. But they were 
apostolic. They were under the iron curtain. They were told they couldn't worship God, couldn't praise God, had to be a part of that Soviet system. But somehow they were able to worship God. Somehow they were able to find salvation and live for God under those circumstances. So it is possible. Praise God. In a bad situation, you can see God working. Because the Bible lets us know this fact. That all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Even if our nation goes another way. You can serve God and God will be faithful to you. Praise God. He was faithful to the children, these, these uh, three Hebrew children. You know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were brought to Babylon and they were... In, they were made a part of that culture. He took the brightest minds because he wanted them to be a part of their culture and to get what he could extract from is, from uh, Judah. And so he had the brightest minds there. But yet and still, they studied what they were supposed to study. They did what they were supposed to do. But when it came to something that would violate their relationship, their pact, their, their, their commitment to God, they refused. They refused to eat the king's meat that was offered to his idols. Because God was trying to do something with Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't even know it. God was trying to tell Nebuchadnezzar and show Nebuchadnezzar how powerful he was. Yes. God was trying to do this. Because this man sat atop the world. See, God allowed certain things. You know, here's Habakkuk hearing what's going to happen. And he's upset about it. He's a prophet of God. He hears how God's going to take care of Judah and the corruption that's going on. And how miserable and terrible it is. And he's beside himself when he hears about it. But he doesn't know God's plan. God plans to put this man and help him to conquer the whole world. But then when he conquers the whole world, God wants to show him how powerful he is. That's right. Yeah. And he knows the man's going to have a change of heart and he's going to give God some praise and some worship. Hmm. God knows all of this. We don't know. We just look at all the cruelty, all the bad stuff, all the things that we're hearing, how bad it is, how ugly it is, all this stuff. But all at the same time, God has allowed this. So Nebuchadnezzar comes to power. And the Bible lets us know that Nebuchadnezzar, at the sight of these men being faithful to God, they could have an attitude. You see, so many people use so many excuses not to serve God. God, you let this happen, that's happened in my life, and, and you, I, I, I just, I, look what I'm going through. They were in that, that situation. They were away from home. Praise God. They were away from home, but at the same time, they made it up in their minds that they were going to serve God. Right. Hmm. They made it up in their minds that they were going to live for God. Yes. Didn't matter. They got taken away and immediately when they, their faith was challenged, they stood up. It wasn't a question. Everybody else was bowing down. You know, Nebuchadnezzar had that dream that Daniel interpreted. And so he builds a statue. And when the men played the music, everybody was supposed to bow down to the statue. Everybody did. Except three guys. And everybody saw them. And they said like this, even if he doesn't rescue us, we're not bound. You see, there has to be some things in your life that are no-go situations. I'm not giving up on God. Even if it's the last thing I do. Even if my life is at stake, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to quit and jump back into the world and let the devil take me and, and have his way with my life. Because I'm looking at something greater than this. It's not just this life that I'm living for. It's something greater. There's something beyond this life. There's a reason why I do what I do. There's a reason I live how I live. There's a reason that I believe like I believe. There's a reason I do what I do. That song that, that uh, was put out several years ago, I can't remember her name. I choose to be a Christian. I choose to live like this, like him. And I don't remember the rest of the words. <laughs> but praise God. Nobody's making me do it. This is how I choose to live. What's the rest of it? You decide for you. And I'll decide for me. The choice is mine. This is what I choose to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's what I want to lay claim on. Hallelujah. Because this world can go anywhere. But I'm not going to hold God and say, God, this is America. It needs to be this way. Hey, hey, God's in charge. He's in charge, right. God's in charge. And he allowed Nebuchadnezzar to take them captive. And God still...
got his will accomplished Amen. through somebody that wasn't even Israelite. That's right. Listen, right. Nebuchadnezzar, I, I just talked about this the other week, Nebuchadnezzar had this pride problem. After you conquer the then no world, you know, you kind of think that you are the cheese. You're it. And he certainly thought that way. They were praising him one day after he made a speech. And the Bible says that God, God smote him. That's right. God said to him, if you don't humble yourself before me, I'm going to take all of this away from you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, it didn't, didn't seem plausible to him how that could happen. So he went on about his business. And the Bible says that his hair began to grow on his body. His nails, fingernails, and toenails began to grow out like an animal. Yeah. And the Bible says he lost his mind. That's right. For seven times or seven years, he was out in the wilderness eating grass like an animal. Yeah. Now his, his court somehow kept this from everybody else. Because enemies would have came in and overrun him. But God kept his kingdom intact yeah. while this was going on. That's right. Amen. And then God brought him back. And he acknowledged God. Think about this. Look at the lengths that God will go to yes. to right. reach somebody. Yeah. Amen. The king here, God went to great lengths to reach. This guy was not Israelite. Yeah. He didn't have the benefit of, of Judaistic teachings mm -hmm. and all of that stuff from a child. He didn't have the benefit of all that stuff. He didn't know a lot about God. What he saw, what he heard was things that he experienced from God. But God took the time to deal with him. And I'm telling you, there are people in our lives, in our family, our friends, in our sphere of influence that God wants to reach. But yes. God wants to know, do you care enough, yes. praise yes. God, to commit yourself, Fine. hallelujah, to keep on praying. Yes. Because when you pray, you inactivate the hands of God mm. to reach and to Glory. keep on reaching and to keep on moving Thank and to keep on doing things in their lives. Thank Look what you. God did in Nebuchadnezzar's life. Right. Wow. Right. He went that far to show himself powerful. Yes. God will do it. Yes, he will. Amen. Are you willing to commit? Amen. Are you willing to be faithful? Are you willing to pray and seek God and believe that he's going to do something? Amen. Praise God. It's something else how seed works. Seed doesn't just show up the next day. Right. It takes time. Yes. And God uses that example because nothing else appropriates the power of God and how he works in a life. He works in ways that we can't see. You can't see what's going on. Just because they act a certain way like Saul. The Bible says he was going, you know, gathering papers to get Christians. To haul them off to jail and then to their deaths. But as he was doing that, God interrupted him. Showing a bright light that knocked him off his beast of burden. He's looking up and God says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Paul says... But he knew. He asked this question, but he knew. He says, Lord, who are you? He says, I am Jesus whom you persecute. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, I've been goading you. Pricks are what, you know, like spurs that the, uh, the cowboys have when they're riding on a horse. They just kick him a little bit and he goes. Paul, God is saying to, to Paul, he says, it's hard for you to kick against your conscience. I'm pricking your conscience. You know that. You know it's me. You ask the question, but you really know deep down inside it's me. And God will do that. God will work. See, I, I, there was Christians praying for Paul. I believe they couldn't talk to him. They couldn't witness to him. Because you witness to him, and you're basically signing your death warrant. Right. But God had to interfere. Sometimes there are some people that God has to interfere yes. in different ways yes. in their lives. To get them to the place, praise God, that they're willing to, to give their life to God. But are we willing to pray? Are we willing to just keep on at being at the altar, on our knees? Yes. Praise God. Every time I'm praying, I'm lifting this person's name up. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's discouraging when it seems like the soil has nothing but dirt there. I planted that seed. It's like that seed disappeared. They do that for a while. Right? Amen. But then after the process under, underground that you can't see takes place, a shoot starts sticking up. And it starts to grow. Are we faithful enough? Do we believe that all things work together for the good? Hmm. Amen. I'm praying. I'm talking to God. And God gets to deal with that person like he did with Nebuchadnezzar. 
But here's the Israelites. This, is, this has happened to them. They're taken. Their promised land, they left behind. And now they are in, they were in the land of Babylon. The Bible says, there's a famous, that famous uh, pro Psalms, how can we sing in a distant land, in a foreign land? They were, they were, they were disheartened because here's their fate. Here's what has happened. Here's where they're at. And God comes to them at this time after he's allowed the hand of persecution. He's allowed the hand of the enemy to destroy them. Here's their mindset. I just want to share this with you just to get you in the frame of mind that they were in. Mm -hmm. And then he comes to them with these comforting words. You see, God just said, let all this bad stuff, and I told you how Nebuchadnezzar did, how he, he, he ensconced on their minds, don't you ever rebel, because look what I will do. Can you imagine the fear that gripped them and the hopelessness that this is never going to change? But the, the, the prophecy had come that it's only going to be 70 years. It's going to be 70 years. The prophecies, prophecies were given during all this time before. So here they are. They're marched out, and they're in Babylon. And then God comes to them with the prophet Jeremiah giving them a word. For I know the thoughts. You don't know them. You look at what's happening to you, how bad it is and how, how destructive it is in your life. And now you're not even at your, your home. You're captive away in another place. He says, I know my thoughts towards you, that I think towards you, saith God. Thoughts of peace mm, yes. and not of evil. Yes, you've seen evil. Yes, some things. I've had to discipline you. The Bible says, whom he loveth, he chasteneth. If you feel that God spanked you in some way, you have to understand, that means he loves you. He's willing to discipline you. He's willing to get you back on the road rather than just letting you veer off into the wilderness and be totally destroyed. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. And here's the big thing. To give you an expected wow. end. Glory. Thank you. Now, wow. here's the thing about it. He says that expected end is your expected end. Right. Your expected end. He says this to these people that are away from home. Their desire is to go back. All of them. God says, my thoughts are to do that. To get you back there. It's going to be 70 years anyway. There's a punishment time. There's a time of all of that. But it's 70 years. You're going back. But God says, those are my thoughts towards you. Sometimes when things have gone awry in your life, maybe you have you can look at some things that you did, some decisions you made, some bad choices you made, and you see that those choices have resulted. It's like one plus one equals two, and I'm dealing with two. And sometimes we wonder, where is God in all of that? God says, I know my thoughts towards you. They're for, for good and not for evil. Hallelujah. For peace. And to bring you to an expected end. Now here's the point. That expected end is up to you. He doesn't tell them the end. He doesn't tell them which end it is. But this is, happens according to your own faith. If you're thinking, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think I'm defeated, I'm always going to be defeated. This can't change. This is a bad place I'm at in life. And this is never going to change. Well, you may be basically doing a self-fulfilling prophecy. He says, I will give you the end that you expect. You see, hope, the definition of hope in the Word of God is a wish with the expectation of fulfillment. What are you expecting? What are you expecting? That's the end that God says, I will give you. Your expected end. I don't want to blow in, in an opportunity. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand, there's pleasure forevermore. God has things that he wants to do. But God ties his hands and allows you to open them with your expectation. You see, a wish is just a desire. But a hope is when that desire becomes infused or intermeshed with the expectation. 
Hallelujah, that it's going to take place. When I believe that it will happen, praise God. Yeah. When I have that conviction yeah. that it will happen, yeah. what I desire, praise God, that's when I'm exercising faith. Because faith is the part of hope that keeps it from being just a mere wish. That's right. Praise God. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. I want to have hope in God. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to have hope in God because God surely didn't bring them back. Nehemiah was a servant of a king several kings later. Uh, of the Medes and the Persians that had taken over Babylon some years uh, past that. But the Bible lets us know that after that, Nehemiah was sent down with, a, with some people and Ezra as well, and they actually rebuilt the wall. They went back home. They dedicated a temple. All kind of things happened like God said they would happen. Praise God. And God was faithful to his word. He says, my thoughts are not evil towards you. I don't just want to keep on pounding on your life. The devil's a liar if he yes, says yes. that God's done this to you and God wants to destroy you. The devil's a liar. Yes. You can't let him get away with that. Yes. That's right. You have to know that if God punishes, his punishments aren't forever. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God will restore. That's Praise right. God. The That's years right. that the canker worm has destroyed. Yes. Praise That's God. Right. Amen. I mean, in, in Habakkuk, he, he, he rounds that off. He, he rounds it off with all the things that God's going to restore. He says, I say into the future. God's giving me this prophecy about the Babylonians coming in and, and then another nation coming in after them and but leaving us wiped out. But you know something? Even in all of that, God will restore. Hallelujah. Right? He says this, that God makes my feet like Hind's feet, that's the red deer, the most sure-footed of all those creatures that you know, walk upon the, the cliffs and all that stuff. He says, God will make my feet like hind's feet. Think about this. So I can walk upon my high places. The most dangerous place, right, is the high place. Because one little slip up or trip, it's all over. But he says, God's going to give me sure-footedness when I'm walking on my the most dangerous place in my life that I am. God's going to change my feet. Uh, yes, amen. He's going to make them like hind's feet. Give me the ability to maneuver over that rough terrain. See, God has some good things in store. Yeah. And he gives you the ability to actually bring them to fruition. Amen. In Romans 8, 28, the Bible says, And we know that all things work together for the good. This is so good. Amen. Of them that love God. And to them who are the called. The church is called the ecclesia or the called out ones. That's what the church is. The called out. So he says all things work together for the good. It may not be in a time frame that I'm thinking, but God has a plan to put it all together. God knows how this cake is baked. Hallelujah. He knows all those ingredients that I throw in there, that he's thrown in, that he's allowed to happen in my life. He's allowed to occur that brought me to the place that I am right now, even though it's torturous right now that I'm sitting in. This place that I'm at right now seems torturous. This place, this situation that's going on, that's surrounding me, that's bringing my heart down, that's bringing me down to despair. In all of this, God is in charge. He's in charge, right. Amen. Yes, Amen. other people have decisions to make, and they can do what they want to do. And sometimes it seems like I can't turn around. But listen, God is the one that's in charge of putting this all. He's, listen, he's the one that's making the promise. Yes, he is. I know my thoughts towards you that are, not, that are of peace. Come on. And not of evil. Yeah. That's right. To bring you to an expected end. Glory. Praise God. Amen. In your life, there's an expected end. There's some things that you have desire of. There's some things that you want to see take place. Perhaps in your family, in your home, on your yeah. job. Yeah. Hallelujah. In this church. Praise God. God says that he will bring it to an expected end. Yeah. God says he'll do it. Yeah. I don't see how. I don't know how. But God yeah. says he will do it. He's the one that works beneath the soil. He's the one that takes the seed. The Bible says.
says this about his word. It will not return unto him void. But it will accomplish the work where until it was sent. The Bible says raise, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart. This is what God says. So you as a parent, you be faithful. You be faithful to the house of God. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it tells you, what it cusses you out, what it doesn't. You be faithful. You be faithful. You be faithful. You train. You train. It doesn't matter the resistance. It doesn't matter all that stuff. Some people, some, some preachers that I know that are some of our greatest preachers had some really bad times with their parents. They were the, the, the worst kid. But yet and still the parent was that steady, faithful one, not giving up, not giving in, not, not changing where they're at. Right. And something about the seed that's alive, Jesus says, my words are life, spirit and life. Yes. They have a way of changing the inside of a person. They have a way of, a way of just changing the thinking. You, Jesus. Sometimes some people take longer. Look, it took Nebuchadnezzar seven years. If God thought a five would work, he probably did five or three or two. It took seven years. This guy had no idea about, you know, Judaism, except what he had learned or studied or whatever from different people. But yet and still, he had no relationship with God. But God took him that seven years, and he emerged from that time totally knowing who God was. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. With a changed heart. Yes. Seven years for somebody who doesn't know God. How long does it take for that person? How long have you been praying? How long have you been talking to God? How long? Sometimes things are going on that you don't even see. That's right. Amen. You're not with them 24 hours a day. You don't hear what God is doing in their hearts or the dreams. You can even pray this way. God, Deal with them in their dreams. I pray that way. God, deal with them Amen, in their dreams. Right. Deal with them in their dreams. Deal with them in their dreams. Because it can be the very thing that turns somebody around. Right. Mm. You never know. You need to keep praying. Hallelujah. There's somebody here who needs to keep on praying. Yeah. You need to keep on talking to God. And expect it in. And expect it in. And expect it in. God's going to give us the expected in. What are you hoping for? What are you dreaming about? What are you talking to God about? What are you believing God for? God can do it. Hallelujah. God's able. God says it in his word. He says, I know my thoughts towards you that I think that are good and not for evil. To bring you expected end. And he says all things, all these negative things, all these things out of your control, all these things that just surprise you or just act in different ways that you're not expecting, all of those things, every one of them. Yes. He doesn't exclude anything. He says all things. All things. Yeah. And all in the Greek, and just, for, just so you know, in the Greek, all actually means all. Amen. Thanks. Amen. All right. Yes. Amen. But everything, the full body of events, of circumstances <laughs> that make up your life and your experience, every one of them work together for the good. But it's somehow somebody has to have a has to have a faith that's like steel that kind of resolve that the children of it, uh, those three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're probably young men, but we call them children. Somebody has to have a resolve like that. That even if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, it will happen. Yes, praise God. And I'm gonna live this way. I choose to be a Christian. I choose to live like him. There's nobody making me do it. This is how I want to live. We decide for you, and I'll decide for me. The choice is mine. This is how I choose to live. Somebody has to have a steel resolve that says, I believe God. I believe his word. What he said, he, what he's promised, he will bring to pass. All things work together for the He cannot lie. He's faithful who's promised. We can trust in the one that's promised. We can trust and believe in the one that said what he will do and know that he's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. Hallelujah. 
He's paid off. There are many people in the Salas family that sister Alice prayed for. There were many that she in the middle of the night cried out for. There were many that she was talking to God for. And we don't know what's going to happen. But I know that there's going to be some seeds that have been sown that are going to come to fruition. They're going to come to fruition. It's going to shock. It's going to surprise. Hallelujah. But that's the way God says it would be. God compare it to seed because you cannot see what's going on beneath the soil. But something's happening. It's all working for your good. Hallelujah. It's all working for your good. It's all working for your good. It's all working for your good. Somebody needs to have some courage this morning. Somebody take good courage. Somebody believe in the Lord this morning and understand that what he's promised, he will bring to pass. What he's promised, he'll bring to pass. What you're putting before him, what you're expecting, hallelujah, God's going to bring it to pass. Even though you can't see how it's going to work. Even though you can't draw it out on the board because it looks so impossible. He says, I know my thoughts towards you. They're for good, for peace, and not for evil. To bring you to an expected end. These altars are open right now for somebody that's saying, God, I have an end in mind. It doesn't look that way. It looks very different from that. It looks kind of scattered. I'm looking at some broken bodies that, that the enemy has destroyed. I'm looking at this stuff that's trying to tell me, don't, don't, don't pray. Don't, don't talk to God. Don't hope in God. Hallelujah. But somebody needs a break from that. You need to come away from that. Come down to these altars. You need to talk to God. You need to say, God, I'm going to believe you. God, I'm going to live for you. God, I'm going to trust you, God. Hallelujah. I'm going to see it come to pass. Hallelujah. I'm going to see it come to pass. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Hallelujah. It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter what it looks like today. It's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. Hallelujah. God is going to make it happen. God is working on the soil. God is letting the seed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have its way in somebody's life. God's working right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's working right now. Praise God. I want to talk to him right now. It's working for your good. 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 It's working towards that expected end. It's working towards your good. It's working towards your good. Hallelujah. Even the bad stuff is working towards your good. Even the stuff that you don't like, huh? that you can't explain, that you can't understand, that you don't desire to be there. It's working for your good. Hallelujah.